Okay. So as you know by now, my general strategy in this format is to just go heavy Demathia. But um, Ionia is also good, especially because of the elusives and how awkward elusive can be. So since we don't have Demacia here, and I'm not a big fan of Shadow Isles and Noxus to some extent because Shadow Isles has a lot of gimmicky parts that are only good with specific cards. So you might sometimes end up with bad cards in your deck that, oh, that either don't do much or only do something with like few cards in your deck. So your draws are kind of weird. <laughs> and I think Noxus has just overall a lot of weird card, a lot of weak cards, and you basically kind of have to hope to get like a very aggressive deck. And if you get some picks where you don't have good aggressive cards, then you have these clunky cards in your aggressive deck, which is also kind of weird. And I also am not sure how good aggro can be in Expedition. So that's why I usually, that's why I so far stayed away from those. So yeah, um, Ionia is also a solid start, even if we go into the Marcia now, because Zed is good. And right. the two, uh, and we got two elusives, like that was a really amazing right. look at the pack. This like we, yeah, it was a super good pack. <laughs> sort of, yeah. Okay, so here, um, I think for me, once again, it's pretty straight up. Um, Demacia, Yoro is a very good champion. Mm -hmm. There are two solid support cards, like both cards aren't great, but they are fine. They can also help your Zed on your elusives. Um, the problem with, Dem uh, with Freyard is that um, Freyard is one of the better regions, I would guess. Since I have only played Demacia so far, I can only guess. Um, since it has a lot of good raid cards, but it still has a bunch of cards that are kind of situational, and this pile in particular is not that great because Lonely Poro is kind of weak. And Anivia, Anivia is fairly good, and Sentry is solid, so it's a fine pile. And then with Noxus, we basically have the same situation again. And this is like, again, a pretty awkward pile. Like, we have Darius and Raz, which are kind of good in aggro, but I'm not sure how good Raz is in Expedition in aggro compared to in Constructed, where you can make sure you have a lot of these pump effects to just kill the opponent the way we saw in earlier games. Right. So yeah, we just take the Demacia pile here. Okay. What we can also do if you want to is, you can uh, first tell me what you would take and why, and then I can explain potentially what I would do different or tell you that I agree with you. Um, sure. What would you prefer? Um, let's do that, because then you kind of see like what my thought process is. And you exactly, can... that's, <clears throat> that's the idea. Right. Okay, All right. so here... Uh, it doesn't really matter because they have similar mana costs, but this... I don't know that... I mean, like, I have so many low-cost cards, is that going to happen that often? You know what I mean? Probably not that often. I'm not a big fan of that card for that reason. Right. It feels kind of situational. Like, sometimes if you have it in your opening hand, you can just play for it. Like, if you have a Fiora and a standalone in your opening hand, you just skip your first two turns, play Fiora on three, make her a 6-6 six, six, and go to town. But, yeah, it's awkward. Like, I had, I had it in my deck a couple of times because I had to, from, like, it being in a good pile. Um, right. But... So far, most of the time, I was just sitting in my hand and being as useless as I, as I would think yeah. it is. I don't okay, like okay. it. All right, so here I'll do this, right? Because this is a good value card, right? It's a 1-1 one, one plus a buff, uh, right? Um, overall, that's the pile we're going to take because I don't like going into a third color. Uh, although Sparring Student is kind of weak, I think, and limited because um, it's better when your deck is aggressive and has a low curve so you can play multiple units reliably in one turn so in expedition it's kind of underwhelming but conspirator is good like it's a 3-2 elusive and it's still a one drop which you want some for your curve and it's one of the yeah. more decent ones so it's still okay. fine but yeah it's it's actually like if there was another pile um that would fit in our deck i could see going with that because the student uh, the student is a card that i would rather avoid than go for if i can by not losing too much quality Okay. So here because right. I have Fiora, is this just good um, synergy, or should I go with like the higher mana cost stuff here? Don't you think that 
that uh, the Laurent is better synergy with your Fiora than a spell that basically does what she does on her own. Because right. single combat basically does exactly what her challenge does. Like, you get a single combat every time you attack with Fiora. Right. So single yeah. combat's actually not very good with Fiora, because it basically just does the same thing she does in combat. Right. Except it costs you a card. With the picture of her there. Yeah, like it, <laughs> like, it costs you a card, and it costs you two mana. So okay. it's not that great. To do the same thing that she does for free. Okay, I gotcha. And yeah, those yeah, are two yeah. very good four drops. We have a yeah. have a nice elusive sub theme going. And the problem with the other pile is also like single combat is like so so. It's like okay if with some of the more top end units that we don't have yet. But like this one drop is just like very weak. Right. Okay. So like that red that right pile is very bad, basically. Yeah. <coughs> Ooh, okay. So Oh god, these piles. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> One pile worse than the next. Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> what would you think and why? Um, maybe... I don't even have that many one-drops. So maybe this, just because it's a way to get more... I don't know, like barrier's good on Fiora, right? Yeah, that's basically the pile. Like, it's not a good pile, but it's better than the other two. Because right. the discipline pile, I think, sown seeds is complete garbage. It's just not worth <laughs> the investment of a card or mana. It's really bad. And right. Wayfinder, we're not going for, like, super heavy Ionia, nor are there enough good one-drops probably that we want in Limited for this to be that good. That's more of a good constructed card. And the other pile, I mean, double Shadow Shift is just, like, really bad. Sure, we have a Z, but, like, still, Shadow Shift is just a pretty bad card. Yeah. So yeah, okay, okay. the middle pile has to be it, just because it's less bad than the other two. Right. Alright, so now we're getting I mean, into the higher mana cost stuff. Careful, this that's Freljord. Yeah. It's still baiting us into a third faction. Yeah. Okay, so this costs one less reach out at a time. Okay. Probably this one, right? Um, yeah, probably slightly over the other one. It's pretty close. Like, the other one is pretty strong, too. The thing is, like, Detain is very good in Expedition. It's not that easy for the opponent to punish you, and it's, like, <clears throat> a good answer for, like, the big impact stuff. But Remembrance is a bit weak. Um, like, it's fine. It's, like, not bad, but it's worse than, or, like, at least not better then the 5-5 five, five in the other pile, and Citria is just really, really strong. So, right. also Citria is, a, is an epic, so it's a powerful effect that we are less likely to see again, while Detain, we might see more Detains, because it's a common. Oh, it's green. Okay, I That's gotcha. something to take into consideration. If you have two good right. effects that you want, you might want to take the one that is more rare. So, okay. you get it, because the yeah. more yeah. common effect you can maybe pick up later still. <laughs> Right, and this is one of the better five drafts that we're going to probably get out of that other card, right? Um, medium, I would say, because uh, I'm not sure if the other one is Demacia only. Is it a Demacia five drop, or is it... I think, I think it's, it's a five drop Demacia. in general, but I'm I not sure. Uh, I was say, I thought it was only Demacia. I'm not sure. I think it could be like a random five drop of all five drops. But yeah, there are like at least two better 5-drops in Demacia. There's the 5-5 five five that gains lifelink and tough if something died right. before you play it. And there's the 5-4 challenger that gives you an elite when it dies, which is super insane. <clears throat> Alright, so what do you like here? Mm. I almost like this just because of the elusive. But... I don't, I don't think I want this. Right? Um, I think that pile is actually very solid and one of the options. It's okay. basically the left or the right pile. I think the pile in the middle is very bad because Green Glade, Glade, uh, Green Glade Elder is like a terrible card in my opinion. Because okay. it's like a 3 cost 1-1. One, one. It's very weak. It's uh, basically only good on turn 3 and even then it's not good good because you know you play a 1-1 on turn 3 and that might just make you fall behind 
too much. And if you draw it later, it's pretty weak. And Yuzari is fine, like it's an okay card, but it's not great, like solid. <clears throat> While here we get like some support for Fiora and just general tricks. Although we're getting a bit heavy on prismatic barriers, which is something I don't like as much. Which is why I would probably lean to take the Demacian Steel pile, because it's a solid one drop that's also an elite for like some elite synergies that might come up. And Oh, this is pretty good. Yeah, and Vanguard Sergeant is just like a very solid three drop, which we don't have that many yet. And for the free for Demacia can just win you the game sometimes. Sometimes you just have like four or five units on play, slam it, attack, and the opponent has to chump block with the entire board or just dies. <coughs> okay. So yeah, I would, would have probably taken the left pile if we wouldn't have so many prismatic barriers already. And we also didn't don't have that much payoff for the barriers because we have one Fiora and a bit of other stuff. But like... Prismatic Barrier is like the weakest uh, barrier effect of all arts, so. Okay. All right, so again, we don't want this because it's Ysari and more barriers. This, I don't know if we need, and these are pretty solid, right? Yeah, I would basically say the piles are like one to, uh, like three to one from the right, and the one to the left is the best. The one in the middle is like the medium pile. Because at least card quality wise the one in the middle is better while the one on the right like i think ghost is basically garbage and will of ionia is decent but varies a bit in like use in expedition it's better in constructed where you can blow out specific things that you need to deal with right. and okay cool all right so here's more barriers <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're getting like all the prismatic barriers here's the elder again for Demacian, but this is good, right? Still? Um, I actually think it's not great as a card on its own. Like, it's good if you get uh, it for free from the Sergeant. Right. Like, these piles are all three pretty bad, actually. Maybe this one? Uh, it's like, oh, wow. I'm, hey. I'm contemplating between pile one and pile two, basically. But I think pile three has, is the weakest. Like, Pile 2 gives us a solid trick, but like a meh elder. And Pile 1 gives us more of a card that we already have, which we might flood a bit on. And Redoubled Valor, which can be nice on Fiora and just like other units. Okay. That's so I that. guess we take the left pile, but I'm honestly okay. not sure. Well, when they give you three piles of crap, you take the best pile of crap, right? <laughs> Something like that, yeah. Sometimes you don't quite know which crap smells the least, so you just take <laughs> a sunfire. Are games going to go long enough for this to happen? They can. Like, it's it's okay, I guess. It's The problem is, I guess, it's a bit weak until you get there, because, you know, it's a 2-2. Two, two, right. Or 3, which is not even that good for 2. <laughs> right. This is flexible, though. Um, deny is good though, right? So... It's solid, I think, in expedition because there's probably some stuff usually you can like stop because there are a lot more, uh, a wider range of cards that you see. So there might be some expensive, powerful effects that are not good enough in constructed but can blow you out here. <clears throat> I don't think I have. Oh, do I have enough elites for this? Um, I mean, let's check. You have Citria, um, Vanguard Sergeant, Silverwing Scout. Oh no, not Silverwing Scout. Uh, Vanguard First Plate, Vanguard Cavalry, and Citria. And you get another Citria with the Battlesmith. Oh yeah, in fact, I would take the Demacian Steel Pile there because we want to go deeper into Demacia, not into. Ionia ideally, I think, because if we get Bannerman, which is really, really good, the 4-drop 3-3 with Allegiance that gives everything plus 1 plus 1, which is also an Elite, and yeah, the Elite sub-synergies, and it's also good for our curve, like, we want to make sure that our deck curves well and isn't too clunky. Right, okay. Um... I mean, that's a good way to close out a game with Fiora, right? What? This is a good way to close out a game with Fiora. Among others, it's also a good way to just kill your opponent's board. Right. 
But yeah, it can just randomly win you the game with VR. But it usually just wins the game anyway if it kills the opponent's board. Like, just not right away, but like, <laughs> virtually. Okay. Yeah, so probably taking this power, right? For some... Yeah. Like, the, the first of all, once again, it's a rare and an epic, so you don't see them that often. And they're both okay. really powerful. Like, Guardian is super strong and can really make you come back from behind, especially with so much like protection that we have. It's going to be really hard for the opponent to deal with this if it has life steal and tough. Right. Okay. And yeah, judgment is just broken. Like it's just so powerful. <laughs> it's okay. really disgusting. There's not a lot you can do around it, and you can't really play around it because it's an epic. So you hurt yourself too much by playing around it like the entire time. So yeah, um, judgment really brutal. Would pick it any time. Unlimited. Okay. Just very strong. I didn't even think to look at the uh, at the rarity. I keep forgetting. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, I don't look at it because by now I know the rarity of most cards, but yeah, it's uh, something to keep in mind if you have a close call to take the more rare card if you want the effect in your deck. So what are we thinking about this here? Because I was going to say this just because this is flexible and I don't know. I don't know. Oh, random spell. Okay, so that may not be worth the... Yeah, it's very dirty, and you might not even like like you're basically paying two to rip, to cycle it into a random card, and then the random card might even be like not good. Right. Okay. Like if you get it like with enlightened, it's probably okay because it's like draw two. Mm -hmm. But yeah, not a big not a big fan. Okay, so this is weak, right? Because we already have a lot of barriers. It's all right, but I really don't want to pick up the Force Prismatic Barrier, even though Succession is pretty decent, because if you don't have a turn one play, it's basically a two mana, like a turn two, three, three, and it's in lead. But yeah, right. not with the Prismatic Barrier. If it would be with like something that we don't have a million of. So yeah, I would take the suit up, because Chain West is decent. And yeah, I mean, we know all oh, know how good Elusives are. This is where you might want Succession, right? That's like closer, yeah. <laughs> okay. That's just a decent pick, basically, to like make sure we have enough units and Demacia cards. Right. Um, we have a lot of at this point, too. It's right? close, though. Like, um, the suit up pile doesn't look terrible. Like, I'm not the biggest fan of standalone, but Bright Steel is a good two drop, and standalone, we might. Uh, we probably have too many early drops for standalone. Yeah. And yeah, Shadow Shift right, once right. again sucks. <laughs> if it wasn't Shadow Shift, I might like this pile because Inspiring Mentor is good. But yeah, I guess it's the middle pile. <clears throat> it's uneventful, but it's just making sure that our deck has enough meat. Right. Okay. Also, make sure to pay attention to your curve while you're drafting to make sure that your deck is like not. Um, like too top heavy or as too as like too many like I don't know two or three drops. We actually don't have that many three drops. We have a lot of three cost cards, but a lot of them are like stuff like barrier. Barriers. <laughs> it's all barriers. Yeah, it's like fifty percent barriers, fifty percent <laughs> units. <laughs> okay. So maybe maybe this because it's an elite to go with our sub theme. Right. Yeah, and we don't have that many fives, so it could be an option. Like, the right pile is a bit too weak. Like, I, I think sparing, if sparing student was something a bit more relevant to our deck, I wouldn't hate the right pile either, because it's another solid elusive. Right. And the left pile is, like, actually pretty solid as an option. Like, River Shaper, we don't have that many spells, so it can randomly draw stuff like Judgment. Okay. But it will often draw us a barrier. <laughs> <laughs> right. We're going to cycle all of our barriers before we get to anything else. So, hmm, we have like nine spells. So we have like a one in nine chance to draw to draw Judgment with River Shaper. But yeah, River Shaper is a bit weak maybe. Although I like the two drop Bright Steel there. But yeah, I think we take the middle pile. But it's close between the left and the middle, I think. Raisin Strike is just a nice trick because it's so cheap. And Whoa. that was the last pick. That okay. might be... 
Yeah, I think I like the first swap because we have like two chain vests and two is maybe a bit much. Yeah. And jewel protector is a bit. It's like not great, but I think it's better than having two chain vests. Okay. Let's All go. Right. And once again, uh, do you want me to just tell me what you would do and then I'll tell you yes. what I would do in yes. the games? Okay. If. If situations become a bit too complex and time is running out, I might cut in and just tell you what to do and then explain you after uh, why, so we don't time out. Yeah, no Because we don't just want to teach you, but we also want to make sure that we actually win the games and not like lose while <laughs> understanding why you lost. Right, okay. All right, so here, this isn't a bad hand, but should I cycle this? Yes, but it's not the only card. I would put everything away here except the Battlesmiths. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, because like we have a turn two play, um, then Avori doesn't add that much, and we just want to find like a nice curve, maybe a one drop, or oh, like okay. spell. Like we just want stuff that plays well in the early turns. Like for example, drawing a good three here, like that, is great. Right. Because otherwise, we have that awkward stage where we have to play a two cost on turn three because we only have a spell. Yeah, and also, like, we have to return our two and stuff, and, like, uh, it's just not great. Like, you want to wanna basically roughly imagine how in a vacuum your first few turns going to go with your opening hand and right. try to optimize your first few turns. Here, I just play this, right? Yep, play, and the opponent doesn't play anything that kills it. We just attack for two. Okay. I guess we're not attacking. <laughs> Thanks for the follow. Okay. We have a bit of a shitty draw, like we drew fairly poorly on the redraw, but it's like not that big of a deal in um, Expedition a lot of the time, because decks are not that aggressive. Yeah, we just take it. Were you considering that barrier there? Yeah, I was thinking about just a block, but I realized it wouldn't kill it, so I was like, eh. Yeah, like, it, that's the thing, it wouldn't kill it, so you basically throw away a card in three mana, or like, yeah. dealing two damage to a 2-3, which is really bad. Sure, and yeah, now you... Um, I think one thing that we could actually do here is pass. Okay. Because the opponent has three mana, so they're probably going to play something, and that means they are less likely to be able to react to that. Okay. And if they don't, it's still not a big deal. We lose one mana, but then we can play it on our turn and have barrier backup. Right. And even uh, single combat. There's obviously the risk that the opponent just doesn't have a turn three play and passes, but I think that's fine. That's pretty awkward. Um. Do I attack like mm. this? No, because it's going to kill me. Um, we don't have enough mana. Like, the thing is, we could barrier plus single combat if he blocks, and then um, I think we attack anyway with that, just with that. Okay. And then you have to barrier. Yep. Yep, yep. Oh, wait, 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 no, don't. <laughs> I'm an idiot. That was my bad. What we should have done is um, single combat with the shadow. Because ah. then it dies to the quick, uh, quick attack. Right, okay. That would have been better. But I realized it too late. I gotcha. It's okay, I completely forgot that he makes a clone when he attacks, so that was a big surprise to me. <laughs> oh, you don't know what he does. Oh, God. Uh, okay, I gotta read my cards. That's the. Yeah, that was that was my bad. It's okay. Because yeah, we can use the clone there. That means we don't deal three damage, but that doesn't matter if we kill his three four. Right. And <laughs> yeah, I think we play this. Because I can block that and kill it without dying. 
Uh, yeah, he's going to have a barrier from Nintendo, but that's not happening. But what we can do here is just block Shen with, with the 2-3, yeah, because it's only going to take one damage. And that makes Shen not able to block that. Yeah, but if you he's um, a student that booked a coaching session with me. Okay. Yeah, we just pass, float the spare mana. So what would you do here? Without uh... doing it, actually? <laughs> I'm probably going to play this, right? Because it can block anything that's on the board. We are on the offense. Uh Oh, that's... Okay. Um, actually... I don't know. I'd probably just play this and attack with all four. Um, I think attacking first is the best option here, so the opponent doesn't play something big. So attack with Zed and with the elusive Battlesmith stays home. Gives us more options with single combat right. and barrier. Okay. Now the opponent doesn't really have good blocks. And we can use single combat on the shadow to kill something, for example, like the Shen. Right. Which is probably going to happen. Let's see what the opponent does. Okay, so... I think we barrier... the... Um, elusive? And then I think we want to single combat with the shade on the Shen. Get rid of Shen. And then post combat we can just replace that. Gotcha. Does he keep his experience, as it were? Uh, no, I think that resets. It only it only doesn't reset for the champions that track progress while they are not in play. Right. Okay. Like Ash or Hecarim, for example. Okay. It's fine. Good that that happened, because we have a judgment and we wouldn't want that to run into a deny. <clears throat> okay. And I mean, it's fine, like, it's kind of good because the shade is still trading, so that deny, either way, we're getting like a solid trade here. Mm -hmm. um, it ignores quick attack. Um, yeah, and now we just play this. Depending on what the opponent does, we might even have a decent judgment turn. Oh no, we don't have enough mana yet because we spent all our mana. But it's fine, like, we're looking pretty solid here. We're like, working on stabilizing. Okay. Um, I think, yeah, that's probably a great play here because it just break walls the opponent pretty well and uses our mana well. The alternative would have been the 2-3 elusive, but that just doesn't line up that well here. Right. Plus the um, elite is a great um, judgment target. Mm -hmm. Oh, and it got the uh, plus one plus one. Exactly. Ha! Okay. And the opponent just didn't do anything because that's the thing. Like he doesn't have good attacks with with Chen yeah, anymore. I attack with everything and judgment if he. Um, I don't. You don't want to judgment like aggressively because you want to let the opponent come to you and. Use it when you oh, have to. Go through. The damage doesn't go through if he blocks, and then I judgment, right? Exactly, exactly. 
Um, I think we attack here with everything other than Battlesmiths and see what happens. Like, we can use Judgment, for example, if the opponent tries something to like punish us or whatever, and then we can blow him out in response. But otherwise, we just attack here. The opponent doesn't have good blocks. Right. No need to jump the gun. That's the thing, like, I talked about this on stream the other day, if you remember. You, like, in general, want to try to avoid using your tricks proactively if you don't have to, because then it's, you give the opponent more options to, like, counterplay. Well, if you use them to react to their stuff, you blow them out and gain card advantage. Right. It's like holding flash in League, so you can turn team Basically. Basically. Exactly, flash. yeah. That's it's the same concept. Like you, like you get a lot more value out of your stuff if you right. react. And yeah, I don't think judgment does anything here. It basically would just trade with Chen, so we just let it happen. Our Z dies. That's okay. Okay. It's a bit unfortunate, but not the end of the world. And the opponent traded a card still. Like he traded four mana against our three mana Z. He still took a lot. This is almost worth playing. Well, hey, this deal. Five, five, or four, 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 right? Yeah, but like, uh, the best play here, I think, is the protector and buff the scout. Because the thing is, um, if we want to play elite and want to use our turn effic efficiently, we also want to play, play the silver wing and then we don't have anything good to buff with the protector. Like we lose two mana here, but we're getting to a stage in the game where that isn't that big of a deal. We have 12 mana. All right. So you can play the elusive if you want to, the big one. Boom boom. Because <laughs> that's another unit that the opponent really doesn't want to fight. Right. Like we have all these big tough threats. And we basically just have to make sure that we don't die and in the meantime pummel the opponent with our annoying uh, three fatties. Or like two fatties and all the elusive. We can technically turn this into a fatty if we want to. But yeah, I think here we just play the the first blade. Once again, Valor, there's like no reason to use the redoubled Valor here. The opponent already used the Will of Ionia and that's probably his only good answer to it. But since it's not killing the opponent, it's just not the most efficient use of our time. I mean, that's actually a decent effect because, like, well, I guess if you have a lot of buff cards, it's probably pretty good. It's not great. It's like one of the weaker champions in the game. Yeah, yeah we so want to just cool. open attack again, I think, with everything but the Battlesmiths, exactly. <laughs> and, like, I mean, what's the opponent going to do? <laughs> And if the opponent tries anything, we still have judgment to like blow, blow him up if he. Like for example, if the opponent tries to like set up some blocks with some tricks, blocks plays his tricks, and then we trick judgment and kill most of the stuff through his tricks. Right. Yes, there is we still, but it's still evolving. That's pretty good actually. But once again, since his stuff um, gets outsized by ours, we can fight back with Judgment. Wait, what? Oh, it's on the same target. You can't yeah. choose new targets. Oh, that makes it so much worse. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, here we're probably just gonna Judgment. Yeah, that seems like a great Judgment turn. And... Let me think on who, because that's the other thing you want to make it like use it on like the best possible option, and yeah, I think the 
I think the um, first blade is actually the best target because that one would die for free. So if he uses like a Will of Ionia, I, we rather have him save the guy that is about to die while the 6-6 six, six is trading. So right. that's so like a fine trade, yeah. Okay. And it's like enough damage. Don't think there's anything he realistically has in Mono Ionia where dealing 6 damage makes a difference as opposed to 5. Can't think of any trick. I think it counts it as two because he gets she gets barrier twice. Wait, why does he like double? Oh, because of um, But yeah, he has another deny, which is not unlikely given that he's in mono Ionia. Now the game <clears throat> could actually get a bit trickier, but we're still looking okay. Like the elusive's doing a lot of work here. Um, yeah, we just play the elite. Once he passes to us. And we're probably not gonna play the protector. Because it just wastes the barrier. And we don't need to use our mana aggressively. And if the opponent does something pre-combat, we can potentially play it on the opponent's turn before he attacks, or his attacks are even worse. Or we even hold it back till our turn pass. We might hold it till our turn, because we, then we can use it on the 4-4 four, four and make the 4-4 four, four attack for free. Right. We might have to try and uh, redouble the Valor something, like one of the elusives now. To try and cheese out the game, because the opponent obviously has us, is ahead on resources, but we have a better board. Like the opponent's kind of losing on the board, but winning in resources. Right. Was that a good card to have pulled right there? Probably, right? I mean, it's a pretty good card, yeah. And it's also something that makes blocking for the opponent a lot harder, because he has three trump blockers that can't block. Mm -hmm. It also means this can't block. So yeah, drop Citria. Boom, boom. Haha. <laughs> So I'm trying to think if we want to make the small guy bigger or the big guy really big. I think we we'll probably just make the big one really big and hope that gets there over two turns. No, no, do it now. Because we have the mana anyway. On this one? Okay. I just didn't want to use that on the wrong thing <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Deny? No. That's pretty solid. Um, so... What we want to do here, I think, is play the 3 2. Who am I doing this on? Him? Um, probably on the 2 2. Because that allows it to attack despite Karma blocking it for free. No, no, on the, on the non elusive, on the Battlesmith. Because mm. then we can attack with everything. Right. Let's see. And then we just attack with everything, yeah. I don't think the order matters. Um, it matters a bit, actually. We should have put Citria as last, because that's the only one he can block with Kinku to gain two health. So you want, mm. so you want the best blocks for the lifesteal units to be at the end, yeah. if the opponent is below 20. And in the beginning, if the opponent is at 20, so they have to block before they even take damage, so they don't gain life from the lifesteal. Right. Like life steal right. chain, li life steal always makes like combat matter. Okay, that's pretty good. 
But I mean, kind of can try to like block the 11, 13. <laughs> oh, right, because it gets cast twice, they get buffed mm -hmm. twice. This is getting out of hand. Yeah. That was a pretty big blow. I feel like we might be losing this game. Opponent has some pretty potent shit going on. I mean, we got him to 4, and we can drop the 5-5 five, five life. And the 11-13 <laughs> remains a problem for the opponent. It's a pretty insane card. Yeah, it's a really good card. That's a solid draw because it's more elusive, which is what. Oh, oh. No. Because that resets our elusive. Oh. Um. So <laughs> this is pretty rough. I think the play here is to play the elite again first, because that's like a big blocker that keeps Karma from attacking for free. So I think we block Karma here and just hope. Wait, where did Chen go? Oh, it died in combat earlier. Yeah. Guys through, right? Yeah, this way we go to one. Oh, you obviously block um, block one of the one twos, the the first one, because that's the original copy. So the opponent, no, no, the one two, yeah, because that's the original. If the opponent returns that, they get another token. So you want to kill the original, not the copy. Okay. Not the buddy from the buddy system. <laughs> but yeah, it's like still looking like. Sort of okay, plus we can play the Guardian again. So it's not hopeless. Man, those denies. Yeah, that was pretty good. Okay, I think we just want to like play our stuff here pre combat. This and. Yeah, play Challenger. Play the elusive, play the 3 2 first and return the battlesmith. Or actually, hmm, we could also hold it back post combat to heal the Fiora basically. Yeah. That's really, really nasty. Isn't that Noxus? Oh no, it's a Ionia card. I thought it was a Noxus card. Keep forgetting. Um, yeah, I guess play both elusives, return the battlesmith. I guess we can force a trade with the 3 2 into the 2 3. Play the, the other elusive first. Um, <clears throat> is there any benefit to attacking with both elusives? I think there is. I think we attack with both elusives. Like he takes less damage if he does the bounce block, but then we get a block again on his to kill him, so he can't really attack with his anymore. But yeah, we're probably gonna lose this. Opponent has a bit too much tempo -y top end here. Like that um what's her name? Mina was super devastating resetting our big yeah. elusive. That elusive would have potentially won us the game otherwise. Despite the opponent having so many more because there are not a lot of ways to answer it. Yeah. Yeah, attack with posts. Deals one damage to the opponent effectively and one damage to the life blade. If only I could have attacked with this guy. Yeah. But this way we can like 
keep our three two alive potentially next turn. Nice. But yeah, it's pretty rough. The so opponent doesn't. Nice. Yeah, basically, if the opponent doesn't attack right away, just play our stuff. Because everything we can get out here helps us to jump block and not like lose our good units. Because the opponent can make a. Like, if the opponent attacks now, we're gonna have to block with some of our better units. Although we actually don't have to jump. We Great, wouldn't uh, Yep, Battlesmith. You can just trade the 5 5 into. Because that heals me for a lot anyway, right? <clears throat> yeah. So. <clears throat> Let's see what the opponent does here. Seems like a mistake to attack with the 1 1s. Why is that? Okay, so you put Fiora and the uh, 3 3 in front of the 1 1s. Uh, the 5 5 in front of a 1 2. Oh no. Oh. You have to pull them back. The 5 5 in front of the 1 2. Um, the 3 2 in front of the 2 1. And the uh, 2 2 in front of the 6 6. Make them by loose. No. We go to seven from the lifesteal. Ah, gotcha. I mean, he might have oh, something. First. Exactly, the combat resolves from left to right. Yeah. Which is why attacking with the one ones doesn't accomplish anything. Right. We go to one. <laughs> now you can play the succession. Okay. I see, said the blind man. <laughs> Another denial? Oh, all the denials! Oh, <laughs> Opponent is, is in denial. <laughs> is a genius panda indeed. <laughs> Yeah, this is the longest game of the Legend of Terra I've ever played. Yeah, these expedition games can get really long. Which is why we won't be able to do the whole run, because it like right. takes forever. Um, yeah, here we basically just attack with bows and... No, no. Just attack with bows right away. The 1-1 one, one is not going to do anything. And you have, yeah, you have to challenge the Yosari. Because that is otherwise making our life miserable. And now the opponent's gonna trade the 6 4 into the 5 5, unfortunately. And then we play a 1 1, which means we're exactly not dead because we can use the 1 1. Why would he use the 6 5 instead of the 6 4? Like. Okay, I guess. Yeah, now we play the 1 1. And hope for the best, but yeah, like I said, opponent has us beat on resources, so. Rip pepperonis. <laughs> yeah. Goddamn scouts. Yeah, unless we draw like a fast spell off the top. We are dead if the opponent open attacks. If the opponent does anything pre combat, we might live. Okay. Nope. Yeah, let's just don't block with that. Just skip, it's faster. Because mm -hmm. <clears throat> we probably only have time for like one or two more games, probably one. Okay. We're probably going to be over with one game. But that's fine. Definitely finished that one game. Um, Yeah, I don't like any of these trades, so we just keep it as is. Like, Chain Rest isn't great, but Shadow Shift is worse. Right. Radiant Strike, I think, is better than Yuzari, but that's debatable. And the other one... Like, I'd rather have the cheap 3-2 elusive than 
the random eight cast top end thingy because I think we have enough top end with like Citria and Judgment and stuff. Right. Oh no, another Ionia deck. <laughs> the nice. That, right? Uh, no. No. We keep the Citria and ship the student because student is just worse. Plus, look, we have attack token, so we want to attack for two, not for one. True. That's, That's a pretty awesome. solid hint. There is a chance that we might not play the 2-drop here. Well, if the opponent doesn't play anything, we might want to play it. Because we're just snowballing ahead. Although it is pretty good with Fiora. So maybe we just hold it back for Fiora. That's like a spot where I'm really not sure what is better. But it might come in handy. Although this like applies a lot of pressure. Or maybe just play it. Maybe just go for the throat if the opponent is like digging around here. Pressure versus value. But I'm really not 100% sure if it's not better to wait here. Because then on like turn 4 you can... Uh, turn 5 rather. That's the problem like... Like on turn 5. It's basically like on turn 5. And I'll probably want to drop the Radiant Guardian turn 5 anyway, right? That's the other thing, yeah. At least if we can set it up. Right. And yeah, I think here we can like play Fiora pre-combat because the opponent has nothing, so most likely what the opponent is going to play here, we can Fiora. Right. And if the opponent doesn't have anything or anything that trades with Fiora, it's even worse for the opponent, so... So just throw this Yeah, out. playing Fiora before attacking is better here. Okay. We could also attack for 5, but I think if we have a challenger here that punishes a lot of units the opponent can play, I like playing the it first and potentially get in for eight. Right. Okay. Oof. And like this is fine. <clears throat> okay. Then we just attack with everything but Fiora. Because that's a bad trade for the opponent, trading his three drop for your one or two drop. Right. Like that's the thing, if something like this happens, we just don't attack with Fiora and then nothing really happened. Like, sure, the opponent's taking three damage less, but he's making a bad trade, which is also good for us. Right. That's why we right. played Fiora first, because it's kind of like a win-win scenario for us. Okay, Link and Luke. Uh, I usually, like, play a bit of Expedition once the Expedition's reset, but I don't play a lot of Expedition on stream. This is because um, we're doing a coaching with Lysum. But usually on Vault Day, like after stuff resets, I potentially do expeditions while I still have expeditions that give me like rewards other than XP. So... Session? Um, no, no. I think we can play Battlesmith here. I mean, the opponent is going to try to Mystic Shot it. But that's okay, we can just chain vest whatever he mystic shots. No, 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 don't do anything. Skip, skip block. It's elusive, he hits us for one, then he gets a free mystic shot, we pass. If he mystic shots, we chain vest in response. If he doesn't do anything, we don't do anything. Okay. Because we want to get the buff on the procession. And the uh, Fiora. Yeah, we do that. And then we can just pummel um, Ezreal um, with Fiora, hopefully, next turn. Exactly. We want to open attack here. We don't want to play something pre-combat to give the opponent an opportunity to make our turn work, uh, more awkward. <coughs> And drawing the barrier was great, because now we have um, 
protection for Fiora. I keep it because it's only going to do one damage to me. Yeah, we're not going to use it, but we have it as a backup if the opponent do does anything here. You know, right. keeps our sure Fiora it's... healthy. Like tis Ezreal. <laughs> it was just uh, the saddest. The opponent's getting owned. <laughs> That feels bad. Yeah. Uh, no, no. Don't pass. Play procession. Uh, succession. We could also like almost just play the Radiant Guardian because in this matchup as a 5-5 five, five, it's just fine. But like we still float the mana for barrier so it's fine. And maybe we can set up a trade with Citria into the 2-1 for example. So we right. can play the Guardian on the opponent's turn. And it leaves us with barrier open. Sure. All the denies all the time. <laughs> if this dude has another four denials in his screen. Neat. Pass. We have nothing more to do. Okay. And yeah, this quick draw guy we can also punish with barrier potentially. But that's one again one of those cases where you don't really want to do it. Because you would have to use it proactively, and then if the opponent has something to blow you out. You can use it on the Asari, right? Um, on the Asari with barrier. Uh, the opponent is on the offense, so we can only block. Um, <clears throat> we might have wanted to play the 2-3 elusive here, but I guess that option is gone now. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but now we can trade the Citria into the 2-1. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Pull back the Citria? Oh, actually? Yeah, it does, doesn't matter. Just Judgment Fiora. It wins the game. <laughs> the opponent has one mana. <laughs> Good block, right? Yeah. Doesn't matter. Yeah, we already <laughs> blocked. That's hilarious. That's just a good <laughs> game. <laughs> That's exactly the spot we were talking about earlier. I guess we get another game in then. Because <laughs> that's just like straight up. <laughs> ching, ching, ching. Oh, shit. <laughs> Boom. Okay, that's fine. That's, that's infuriating if you're on the receiving end of that. <laughs> oh, man. And that's the thing, like, it's so hard to play around this in this spot, like, you can't realistically play around it, so if the <laughs> opponent has it there, you just lose the game. There's not much you can do. Like, I don't think you can play around, like, Judgment all day, every day, because it's just, like, so costly to do. <laughs> Alright, so it's better the Garen or the Fiora here? Um, I think I like the Garen pile more, because the two cards in the Garen pile are too... Super powerful cards, while the Fiora pile has two bad cards. Right. Oh, yeah. More and the Z pile anything. is pretty decent, but like I like doubling down on uh, elites. Also, first of all, it's three elites. Second of all, um, it's yeah, just like yeah. much higher power level. Like oh, yeah. this, the, the pile to the right, it's just like the not high. It's just an amazing pile. Like Vanguard Bannerman is so good. Okay, let's do one last game. Yeah, like, well, we're technically overish, but we'll play that last game. That extra 70 cent. <laughs> <laughs> I was not going to say it. <laughs> Get my money's worth. Oh my god. <laughs> Replace everything, right? Would be a good poker hand, I guess. Right. But yeah, we ship all of them, obviously. We don't keep five drops in our opening end. Because we have enough to draw them anyway, even if we mulligan them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And beatdown begins. It's another Ionia PNZ. Is that a thing now? I mean, I like playing like Demacia into Ionia PNZ. Because Demacia has its own elusive in the 2 3 that we have. We, you often have a light Elu Ionia splash for additional elusives, and you have challenge and single combat and stuff. So the elusive advantage that Ionia has isn't that big against Demacia, and Demacia just like outsizes them. It's a fine expedition card. Uh, 
It's there. just for curve and like because of the elite synergies. I just dropped this, right? Yeah, I mean, that's the only thing we can play. Like, it's not a good card in that sense, Link and Luke, but it's like a solid role player, especially because it's in the lead. And because it, like, doesn't trade with, like, random one damage stuff or one attack stuff. <clears throat> oh, this card? Well, it's also an elite in my elite deck. Haha! -ha! Yeah, yeah, exactly. And <laughs> and the thing is also because you have buff stuff like for Demacia and Citria and Bannerman, um, the things add up quickly and matter. And there's also like stuff like Warchefs, which we didn't see any, but like Citria into Warchefs really good. Like then you're just attacking for five on turn two if you have if you attack second. This is my move, right? Yep. It usually is. <laughs> On turn three, if you have a tech token, and the opponent doesn't have a blocker that blanks it, it's quick attack, right? You want to start getting him bubbled or whatever. It has quick attack. Yeah. Um, you can only attack with that because of the three three now. Uh, okay. But it's fine. Like we wouldn't have had a great open attack without that, and attacking with that alone is better than attacking with the C three as before he plays the three three. Right. And like, look, he's trading a card for your Z. Or like, just your Z's existence. Your Z just made your opponent uh, pay two mana and discard a card, effectively. Which is pretty alright. Because that's the thing, like, with Demacia, you have a pretty good beatdown game, but you also have a solid, like, grind value game, because you just, your cards are so efficient that you can usually trade efficiently with your opponent. And you have strong late game stuff, so you can like trade yourself efficiently into late game as well. I throw my elusive to counter his, right? Yeah, that seems solid. Just uses our turn well and denies the opponent a free attack. The thing is, he also only gets one life from the Kinku life blade because the tough prevents one damage, so he doesn't even get two life, I think. If you block. Ah. <laughs> so. There's basically no value for him attacking there. Good value for us. Yeah. I almost like blocking here, actually. The 2-3. But I'm not sure. I think now we have to block the life blade. If he does it just attacks with the 3-3, I would have just blocked the 3-3. Because then the Citrios can attack into it. And it's semi free. But yeah, this way is better. Because now our 2 3 can attack next for free. Right. So I think I'm learning that I should trade health a lot more than I do. You're taking. Uh, you're not taking enough damage and making bad blocks, you say? Yeah. That is. I uh, block everything all the that, time. Yeah. Now. Yeah, that's a that's a common mistake of beginners. Like health is a resource. As long as you have one health left, you're still alive. So right. you only want to go. You can go as low as possible without dying. Like if your opponent has a deck that can deal the last couple of damage, you don't want to go to one. You might want to only go to like four or five. But in general, health is a resource. <clears throat> um, I think here we just open attack. Open attack. Okay. No, no, not with everything. The Citrius stay home because they just die for free to the 3-3. Three, three. We're not that aggressive, like, in Constructed you might do that... Attack, the time. Um, in Constructed you might do that just to force damage and stuff, but here we're not like an aggressive, like an aggro deck, we're more of like an aggressive mid-range deck. We want to like, get damage in and pressure the opponent, but not like, throw away resources to deal damage. Right, okay. Just want to take the damage that we can get without wasting resources. <laughs> And aggro decks, as you saw in Constructed, probably, you often, like, even throw away resources to deal damage to the opponent because you're good at closing out and dealing the last few points. Because that's the problem, like, you can't, like, burning resources to deal damage to your opponent is only good when you can make sure you get him to zero or less. Right, yeah. Cause I can if you can't guarantee that, that it's, it's losing you the game. Right, and I think that's my issue, is I just run out of steam. Like, I run out of things to hit with. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And now you just counter barrier. Is it? That block with the Kinku life blade is really bad, by the way. Mm -hmm. 
because his dies and yours doesn't. And he doesn't even get any of the heal. Yep. At 20. Okay. Yeah, and then you can just play both units, I guess. And now when our board is more full, we can a bit more aggressively trade, like the opponent attacks, we just trade our 3-3. Three, three. And if we wouldn't have the 3-3, three, three, we might still consider trading like one of the Citrias to free up a board slot and make the 3-1 less of a defense uh, unit, so we can drop the Radiant, or rather the Druid Protector first. But the opponent's gonna do that for us. Just pass, we don't board space, we have no play, play post combat. Um, the blocking on defense, that the jump blocking with units, so basically blocking with a unit without trading, like a unit just dying, can be good, like like we had in the first game with Shen, mm -hmm. where the Shen is 2-5, so if we are on our turn and we can't attack with Z because it's a 2-5, it blocks Z and kills Z. But mm -hmm. then if you block the Shen with something to deal 2 to it, it's a 2-3, and then it suddenly can't block Z anymore, so you, you enable attacks that you otherwise wouldn't have, so sometimes you want to soften up the health of your opposing units on defense to have a better offense, especially if you have quick attack units. Right, okay. That's okay, I mean, that did a lot of work in terms of resources. Yeah, I traded for these threes. No, 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 no. Yep. Exactly. Okay. Now okay. throw the Guardian down? Um, no. No? Okay. Play the Protector uh, on the Guardian. Make our Guardian the biggest boom boom in town. <laughs> right. Because once again, if we don't do it now, Protector is not going to do anything anymore. And now we can just open a tech a truckload. Ship. <laughs> and suddenly the opponent is in, at 10. Right. Like, that's the thing, like, once you have taken control of the board with, like, good trades, the opponent dies pretty quickly, so... Yeah. No rush. <laughs> the opposite. <laughs> it doesn't ever die. And you were probably kind of doing it the other way around. Focusing yeah. on the opponent's health rather than on the board. Right. Like, that's I, how you... I had heard about board control, and I was like, okay, I gotta try to keep more units on the board than he has. Like, I didn't even think about, like, not allowing them. Or, well, like, that's not, not like, generally about, like, keeping more units in play, but, like, making, managing the board and, like, making profitable attacks. If you can get ahead, you will end up with more units on board. But even if you can't get ahead, you mitigate the damage and keep the advantage of your opponent to a minimum. Okay. Yeah, I guess we just so play... I guess we just played a 2 3. The opponent attacks and consider like blocking to soften it up. Because that's the thing, like, um, here, if the opponent would attack with a 4 4, I would block with the student mm -hmm. because it allows us to play something else again. And the way it looks here, we're going to have to tr trade two cards against the 4 4 anyway because we have nothing that trades directly with it. So we could make it a 2-2, two, two, then make another 3-3, three, three, and then attack with everything, and then if the opponent blocks, we have worked through the 4-4, four, four, basically. Right. But yeah, this way we just pass. So it's often like pretty contextual. Oh my god. Pass. And then <clears throat> open attack with everything but the student. Or actually, uh, let me think. Oh no, we are still on the opponent's so end. Never mind. Pass. Thought we were. Um... 
Yeah, this attack doesn't make any sense. Because <laughs> you can just put the 2-1 in front of Ezreal for free to deal 2 damage to Ezreal and eat the 2-2. Two -two. Um, yeah, just open attack with everything but the student. The trick made this a lot better. And open attacking matters because it allows, it denies him to like buff the 2-1. Right. Ooh, do I kill this? Um, depends on what else happens. But probably not. Probably we save the elusive. Or do we kill Ezreal? No, we don't kill Ezreal. That doesn't matter. Um, yeah, save the elusive. Because <laughs> then we can just win with the elusives by grinding down his elusive. And see if this would have been buffed, if this would be a 3 1, we couldn't do that. <laughs> now we can Radiant. And that Radiant is a nightmare for the opponent. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Pass right. Um, no, we played a battle smith. That's why not. How many shrooms do we have? Oh, it's a fair share, but we have a lot of health and a life stealer, so it's whatever. Oh, that's kind of cool. I didn't know you could do that. Hmm. Yeah, we could do that. That gives us that in. Mm, not sure if I like that. I think we just play succession. Because I'd rather use that on the offense, I think, area. So I use the trick on offense instead of defensive side? Well, it depends. Like, we don't need it here. Okay. Like, the opponent doesn't have great attacks anyway. And it enables us some decent attacks, because him taking damage is not good for him. And him blocking a barrier elusive with one of his elusives is really bad. So he basically has to take some damage. And the 8-8. Eight, eight. Cool if I could pull a Fiora and a, uh, whatever it is. A judgment. <laughs> That'd be fun. I think we're going to have to win the, the fairway this time. But it's just so fun. Oh boy. I mean, once again, we have a free block on the Azrael. The 2 1. 
And the 2 3 can eat a 2 2. Eat a pack of dicks. <laughs> I mean, not sure what his plan was here, but mm -hmm. we gladly take this gift. And that pass. Maybe he's getting frustrated. Kinky life played. Um, here we play the protector. Put it on like the 2 1, I guess. And then just attack with the 8 8, the 2 1, and the 4 4. Leave the 2 2 at home. Because you can eat that for free with the with his kinky life played. Mm -hmm. And these guys are going to stay back to block. Actually, the three the three two can also attack. Okay. But uh, his kinky life blade denies us the attack with our two twos. Right. Because they would just eat them for free and gain life. <laughs> oh, what could this possibly be? Find out. I don't think I want to. Why would he do this here? This is so weird! Opponent is confusing me. Um, yeah, I think it's fine. I was thinking he gets a free trade on the 3-2 three, three with the 3-2, but like otherwise he gets a jump, so it doesn't matter. He'll just ship. <laughs> The Radiant Guardian is just beating the opponent into submission, hopefully. At least that's the plan. Yeah, he can jump, trade the 4 for 1 into the 4 4, trade like the 3 1 into the 3 2 and take 2. Which is fine, that softens up the board. So is this only going to heal me too? There's actually an argument to like leaving the 4 4 home because it gives him like a trade on the 4 1. And it blocks his like 3 1s on defense. But we still have like the Guardian to do that. And I kind of just want to like reduce his board size. So it. Because if we force him to do these trades, it's going to be a lot harder for him to jump the Guardian each turn and get it l low enough that it dies. Right. I'm just going to heal so much. Yeah. Now you can play your own kinky life blade. Haha. -ha. Would have been a lot better for him to like do the shadow shift like after blocking. But I guess it didn't matter too much because we attacked anyway. Oh, that's annoying. Because it can eat two elusives from us. First it's gonna eat our kinky life blade. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> opponent is getting slapped. It might be a bit overkill here, but we'll see. How ambitious the opponent is feeling, but it's a nice backup to have for sure. It's actually not that great right now. It's more of an insurance policy. Because the opponent doesn't have like good attacks or good blocks, so we're not gonna get a good judgment here for for now. We might get like a semi free judgment where we can kill a lot of trump blockers so they don't deal damage to our stuff, but it's a bit awkward. It certainly allows us to attack with everything. Oh maybe we get a decent one here. Maybe we get a decent he attacks with everything here, we actually get a good judgment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
just sweet. Oh yeah, baby, it's happening. <laughs> it is happening. Come on, give us the free one as well, please. Yes. yes. <laughs> now you're just judgment. I was about like, the opponent doesn't have a good attack, but then the opponent made sure he has a good attack, and then we have judgment. That's what I meant, like, it's a good insurance here. That's fine, we take six. No, no. Okay. We take six. That's so funny. We want, we want to keep that elusive, because the opponent doesn't have any elusives anymore after this. Oh, that's right. That's what I meant with insurance, like... The way things were, Judgment wasn't even good. But as soon as the opponent gets ahead, Judgment <laughs> completely punishes him because then he like gets blown out if he gets in a good attack. As long as the opponent doesn't have good attacks, Judgment is not good. But I just toss um, this down, right? Yeah, slam it. And depending what the opponent does, we attack with everything or just with the elusives. Okay. Actually, we can attack with everything because he can't even trade with the fat guys. All right. Yeah, we just attack with everything. He basically has to jump block the two big guys and goes to like. Actually, le leave the battlesmith at home. Yeah. Because um, he can actually take 10 and go to 1 and eat the battlesmith for free. Plus, he might have stuff, so this way it's better. But yeah, we're winning this game now. But yeah, I'm not too surprised. I think into Ionia PNZ. You're really good with the Master's Splash Ionia. To be fair, you're good into most things with this combination, which is why I play it. At least that's what it feels like to me. Right. Like double jump or like go to one and six jump. Like, how is he ever gonna come back? He doesn't have judgment. And he doesn't even have a unit to judgment everything. <laughs> Actually, this unit would be good enough to judgment everything because everything is so low. <laughs> And we have more than enough life to never get puff kept out of the game. And this combination doesn't have any board sweeper. So we just win the game next time. Sweet. So are there any questions or like closing thoughts that you want to like get off your chest before we wrap up? Uh, no, I think this was good. We're actually like almost 25 minutes over. Jeez, <laughs> that dragged out. Like these expedition games go really long. Or you were just having so much fun you didn't even realize. Nah, I just wanted to like finish the game that we started, obviously, and not like wrap mid game. Right. Well, I appreciate that. Cool. So well, yeah, any anything at the end that you no, want to ask I think or I need to be more willing to trade for life early and keep things on the board. Yeah, just basically don't make bad trades to protect your life total unless you really have to. Okay. And sort of try to look a bit at how the game is going to play like the next and maybe the next two turns. Like, for example, sometimes seemingly bad blocks are good because they enable a good attack on your turn, like I explained, stuff like that. And here, remove the mouse so I can see what options you have. Um, yeah, I once again, wouldn't change anything. Like, Refuge is not really an upgrade since it's basically like Prismatic Barrier and we have three. We don't need the lifesteal too much and the one cost trick is better. So once again, no change. Because I like the Conspirator a bit better than the Mentor, but it's like... <clears throat> so yeah. Um, good luck with the rest of the run. I hope you do better this time. And yeah, just kind of try to get damage in but do not like throw away your cards make sure you trade as well as you can sometimes as you saw with like the 4-1 for example you have to trade multiple cards into one card because there's no good way around it and right. you also don't want to give your opponent too much time from this like if we would have just never attacked with anything that doesn't trade with the 4-4 I think we just would have played the game too slow and we had too many cards lying around that don't do anything for us, so they're virtually dead. They're virtually not there. Right. So by making this one big attack, we got a bunch of extra damage in at the cost of like losing the 3-3 three, three into the 4-4 four, four, and the 2-2 two, two into the 3-3. Three, three. 
but um, we also um, kind of pushed our advantage and worn down the opponent's stuff to a point where the opponent couldn't then deal with our big guy that we follow up, which also would have for, uh, required the opponent to trade with multiple cards in it. So we kind of made up for it there. Like we traded two cards into his 4 4, but he would need to like trade two or three cards into our Radiant Guardian, but then he couldn't anymore because we made that bad trade before and stuff like that. Right, we cleared his board. Okay, I gotcha. All right. Um, hope that was helpful for you. And yes, yeah, if you have any questions or like stuff you want to do um, next time, maybe think about some stuff for uh, future sessions if you uh, want to do more um, sure. so we can tackle specific problems or uh, questions that you have. Um, and yeah. All right. All right.